I forgot to put my mic on, so. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. It's glad to have all of you here this day. Hopefully you grabbed a bulletin on the way in, or if you're online that you downloaded the bulletin at flcbothel.org. Uh, we continue our uh, uh, sermon series, uh, uh, Hymns of Faith. Um, today, Richard Edmonds is going to share with us, right? I did tell you that. Okay, good. And so uh, we have uh, folks from the congregation who are giving a sermon each week in, in uh, August on their favorite hymn. Uh, Stephanie got us off to a good start last week. Um, with that, let's stand and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. God, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And also with you. Join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
you may be seated. The first reading is from Psalms 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory and has revealed his vindication in the sight of all the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and praises and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with a lyre with the lyre and the song, sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the word and those who live in it. Let the floods laugh, clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The word of God. Invite the children to come on up. It's been a long time since I've done a children's sermon. Who usually does the children's sermon? Roger usually does it. You know where Roger is right now? He's driving the big bus with 12 other kids to Luther Haven for a servant trip. And we Hope that they travel safe and they have a good time, don't we? Yeah. Well, today, Richard, where'd Richard go? Richard's behind us. You guys know Richard? Mr. Edmonds? Yeah, you do. You know him. He's going to share with us one of his favorite hymns. The hymn is called, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. Do you guys like to sing? Yeah, singing's good, isn't it? Well, this hymn in particular is about when life isn't good. Have you had a bad day? 
Yeah, you've had a bad day. I've had a bad day. Anybody out there have a bad day? Yeah. Sometimes singing helps, doesn't it, when you have a bad day? Well, I have a story when I was in college, which I hope you guys are thinking about going to college, aren't you? Uh, I think your mom and dad are thinking about you going to college. You don't want, <laughs> they don't want you in college? <laughs> Not yet? Oh, they don't want you to think, they don't want to think about you guys getting older. I see. <laughs> well, it's going to happen. Um, when I was in college, I had a really sad week. It was a long week. I had a really bad week. I was feeling really sad about myself. But you know something that really helped me? And I know this is going to sound silly, but I started saying, Jesus loves me. And that helped me. It didn't make me feel better, but it made me, it, it did remind me that someone loves me, right? And that's so important to do. And I think this song today kind of helps us remember that even in the hardest of times, God is with us. And that's the only real good thing in our lives that we can trust forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And that is God is with us always. And I love this line. No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock, Jesus, I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from sinning? So I want you guys to keep singing. Okay? Let's pray. Dear God, you gave us voices. Voices to speak. They're Really, singing is what brings us joy. As we sing of your love, remind us that love is with us forever. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. And we'll join in this hymn, and we're going to sing the first three verses um, before the sermon, and then we'll join in the last uh, stanza at the, at the end of the sermon. All right? If you are willing and able, please stand. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from, our Lord, from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How can I keep from singing? 
We just sang that refrain several times. I've always enjoyed singing. In fact, I love to sing. Besides the playing the piano, it's my best therapy. I was raised in a musical family. I sang my first solo here at First Lutheran Church in the spring of 1959 in the former parish hall, which is where we were worshiping at that time. I sang throughout high school, college, seminary, and parish life and worship, and in the communities in which we've lived. I love to sing, and I love to sing hymns. However, this isn't about me. Today isn't really about my story, but it helps to see why I was drawn to this hymn, this song about singing, singing the songs of God's people, and in doing so, singing God's song. You know, song was a part of the life of God's people in Israel throughout their history. There's the song of Moses and Miriam in Exodus, the song of Hannah in Samuel, and many even two or three line songs scattered throughout the Old Testament. But that's to say nothing of the Psalms, which were meant to be sung and often speak about singing. As our Psalm 98 this morning exemplifies. In fact, the words of our gathering song, O oh, sing to the Lord, sung to a Brazilian folk tune, are taken from various Psalms. Sing God a new song, dance for our God, blow all the trumpets, shout to our God. Song has been a part of the Christian faith since the earliest days of the church. One of the composers in the Tizé community in France said, the Christian faith was born singing and it has never ceased to sing. In the New Testament, we have the song of Mary, the Magnificat, the song of Zechariah, the Benedictus, and we read that Jesus sang hymns with his disciples on the night before he died. The early Christians sang hymns in their at-home worship. And in the first centuries, the organized church sang perhaps mostly in Latin or Greek and sung by a, a special group. But during the time of the Reformation, congregational singing was introduced by Martin Luther, who said music is a fair and glorious gift of God. Next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. It controls our hearts and our minds and our spirits. After all, he continues, the gift of language combined with the gift of song was only given to man to let him know that he should praise God with both word and music, namely by proclaiming the word of God through music. In fact, one little interesting note that hymns were used as the way to teach the faith, to teach God's word to congregations at that time who largely couldn't read. At first, congregational singing was always done with the Psalms, paraphrases of the Psalms, but as time went on in the 18th and 19th century, hymnists began to write hymns with free verses, not necessarily based on the Psalm, but based on the word. But that brings us to our hymn today. My life flows on in endless song. It was in the late 1860s that a Baptist minister named Robert Lowry composed the melody that he called Endless Song. And he used it to frame a poem that either he or another person wrote. He served parishes in Brooklyn and he served in Ohio as well, mostly. But he would be, have been preferred to be known as a, the greatest of preachers which I understand he was, but he's best known as a hymn writer of more than a thousand hymns, including one that you may know called, Shall We Gather at the River? But Lowry wrote, My Life Goes On an Endless Song. In the late 1860s, in the time of post-Civil War reconstruction, rebuilding the country, in the time of pandemic, yellow fever and typhoid fever and bubonic plague, you know, it wasn't a good time. There were plenty of Earth's lamentations. But in 1869, he included the hymn in a songbook of the time called Bright Jewels for the Sunday School. The hymn didn't find a place in the top 10 of hymns immediately. Indeed, it languished in obscurity for many years until a folk singer in the early 50s named Pete Seeger heard the song from a friend, Doris Plen, who had learned it in turn from her grandmother. It's an inter interesting note here that Doris Plen added another verse to the hymn. 
that arose out of her resistance to the Joseph McCarthy hearings of anti-communist anti hearings in the early 50s. You, remember, you may remember that time. The verse that she wrote included, is not included in our hymnal, but in a number of, of hymnals. She wrote, when tyrants tremble sick with fear and hear their death knell ringing, when friends rejoice both far and near, how can I keep from singing? In prison cell and dungeon vile, our thoughts to them go winging. When friends by shame are undefiled, how can I keep from singing? Well, Pete Singer, Pete Seeger, Seeger sang the song with a few other changes to make it as non-religious as possible, including substituting for Christ is Lord, love is Lord. So what was written originally as a hymn became a folk song and was picked up by another, a number of other singers. However, later in the 1960s, that hymn began to appear once again in hymnals, and it's now we have it in our ELW, basically in its 1860s form, with a dash of the 1960s. That's a little bit about history, but what's the message of this hymn? What's the message of my life goes on in endless song? It's a hymn of faith and trust, no doubt about it. But I find great meaning in the first two lines of the hymn. It's kind of mystical. My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I catch the sweet, though far off hymn that hails a new creation. I would suggest don't get hung up on that word, my life. It's, this is not a song like my God and I walk through the fields together. This is a, a, a song about community. Our life flows on in endless song. Our life as God's people is the focus here. Our life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentation. And amidst this ever flowing life, we hear the sweet though far off hymn that hails a new creation. It's a song. It's a song something large, somewhat much larger than my song or our collective song together. That is God's song. And it's a song that has sounded through the ages. God's song is God's purpose, God's intent, God's love, God's grace, God's consuming love. The life of God's people flows on above earth's lamentation. Lamentation. Among them, war and violence, illness and pandemic, loss and grief. In all those, we are sustained by God's song, God's purpose to draw all people to himself and into his future, the new creation. God's song has been with us since creation, and it sustains us. It's the inner, in underpinning of our lives. It's the rock to which we cling as we sing and worship hymns every Sunday, several of them, realize that we are part of a larger song because at that time we're adding our voices to the voices of those who have gone before us all together as the communion of saints singing God's song throughout the ages. This hymn also reminds us that we need to sing. We need to sing. As God's people, we can't be silent. This was, in a way, a challenge between March of 2020 and June of 2021. We couldn't sing together, and that's the way it, it should be. Pastor Berg and Lucy Kay and David Osborne on the camera and Joe and Eric on the drums, and I would gather and record the hymns. And then you would see them sung and displayed on your screen at home. But I can tell, could tell it wasn't the same. It was hard to visualize being together. Although I do hope that it did in some small way help you to connect to God's song, God's story. That far off hymn that hails a new creation. You see, the church needs to sing God's song so that the world's song doesn't overwhelm. As we sang in our canticle this morning, when our song says peace, 
and the world says war, when our song says free, and the world says bound, when our song says home, and the world says lost, we will sing despite the world. We will trust the song, for we sing of God, who brings us home at last and gives us a song for all. God's song is with us. As the second and the third stanzas we just sang remind us, through tumult and strife, we hear that song ringing. Even though our joys and comforts die, the Lord our Savior lives. When the darkness of life gathers round, God gives us his song in the midst of the night. Throughout the seasons of the year, the church year, we hear God's word, God's song, sung in creation, exodus, the wilderness, the promised land, the prophecy for just living, and then the incarnation, the ministry, the suffering and the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus the, and the coming of the Spirit. It's all a part of God's song. So what are we going to do? We are going to sing God's song in our worship hymns, in our liturgy, in our service to others, in our witness, we will sing. And sometimes we will sing beautifully. Sometimes we will sing poorly, sometimes happily, sometimes sadly, but we will sing. For silence is contrary to all that we know and feel and believe. Our life flows on in endless song, above earth's lamentation. We catch the sweet though far off hymn that hails a new creation. How can we keep from singing? Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing the last stanza of that hymn. One of my prayers before I preach is that if my sermon does not bring the good news, I trust the hymns will. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Let's now affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, 
for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God, in your mercy, for the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, for those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray for judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of officers and prison chaplains that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, for all who cry out to you in their affliction, we especially remember Phyllis and Nancy, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick. God, in your mercy, for this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration, for those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound, or hospitalized. God, in your mercy. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy. On this day, we offer up a special prayer for Bob and Phyllis Waters, who are celebrating 72 years of marriage along with the Danforths who celebrate their 10th. Be with all who have dedicated themselves to another, strengthen them, and encourage them. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift, now, for whom shall the people pray? We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Drawn to Christ in seeking God's abundance, let us now confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life, then feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of the miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. Hear this, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share that peace in a way that is safe, either with a hand over your heart or hands folded, or you can wave the peace sign.
Please be with you. Please. And peace to all of you out there at home. We will not be passing the offering plates, but again, I want to say a, a thank you to all of you who continue to support the ministry of First Lutheran Church. Uh, and if you brought your offering today on the way out, the offering basket is in the inner narthex. For those of you online, if you want to give now, you can go to flcbothel.org and hit the donate button. We'll join now in our offering hymn. Sing their songs to the Lord, he to whom wonders belong. Rejoice in his triumph and tell of his glory to the Lord a new song. Now to the ends of the earth, see his salvation is shown and still. you now to stand and join in the offering prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. I invite you now here and at home to join me in saying the words of institution. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing and his body given up and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, 
Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all, so please come. You may be seated as I invite our servers to come forward. Please know that we'll be serving first by uh, sanitizing our hands and we'll be wearing a mask. Uh, the bread has gluten in it, but we do have gluten-free uh, crackers for you, if you just ask. And we have red wine and white grape juice. For now the feast is spread. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Our Lord's body let us take together. Our Lord's body let us take together. Come, let us drink, for now the wine is poured. Come, let us drink, for now the wine is poured. Jesus' blood would let us drink together. Jesus' blood would let us drink together. In Jesus' presence now we meet and rest. In Jesus' presence now we meet and rest. In the presence of our Lord we gather. In the presence of our Lord we gather. Rise and to spread abroad God's mighty word. Rise and to spread abroad God's mighty word. Jesus risen will bring in the kingdom. Jesus risen will bring in the kingdom.
Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask, as you have nourished us in this meal. Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. We have a few announcements. Uh, the first is, as I mentioned in the children's sermon, Roger is off with the kids to uh, Luther Haven, a bunch of junior high and high school kids to go do some service projects in and around the Silver Valley, I believe. And so please keep them in your prayer this week. They come back, I believe, on Friday. Um, David. Good morning and uh, greetings from the Building and Property Committee. I uh, just wanted to let you know, if you haven't already seen them, we've installed two new um, bottle fillers for those of you who like to bring your own refillable water bottle, we're trying to become more green and reduce our foot, carbon footprint here in the world. And uh, we are going to be phasing away from the bottled water. Uh, that's gonna happen shortly. But again, the bottle filling stations, there's one um, upstairs by the restrooms and another one is downstairs in the fellowship hall. And this is a touch-free bottle filler. You just hold your bottle underneath the uh, spout and it'll fill your bottle with 50 degree refrigerated filtered water. And <laughs> in an effort to help you develop a thirst for that, Saturday, August 28th, after our long COVID closure, the Building and Property Committee invites you to come from nine to noon for a cleanup party um, to prepare for rally day, which is about two weeks later. And if you're not able to come on that Saturday, we're gonna have a list of chores that need to be done. If you can come up anytime on your own um, and care to do one of those chores, just let us know which ones you did so we don't repeat it. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Uh, part of our greening of our building, uh, we did this about eight years ago. We became an Energy Star uh, building with all the changes we've did, done to our electrical system. Um, and now we're gonna continue that with, of course, hopefully encouraging you all, you should be drinking water anyway, right? I know, Nancy, you just gotta drink your water. I like my wine too, but... <laughs> but anyway, yeah, just part of our greening the congregation. We'll be, we'll be making some other changes uh, as we move along, as we embrace our, uh, our uh, if you guys remember, it was so long ago when we did our big uh, reimagining what our mission is here at First Lutheran Church. One of those uh, five important things was becoming uh, a greener congregation. So we'll be doing that. Um, as uh, David mentioned, uh, Rally Day is, of course, always that Sunday after Labor Day weekend, um, September 12th. Is that right? Something like that. <laughs> so I uh, just know that that day is coming up as well. Um, I think that's really about it. It's summer, isn't it? Rachel, thank you for singing today. That was so beautiful. We miss that. <laughs> I miss it too. Very <laughs> good. So we'll have you again soon. With that, let's stand and receive our blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
centuries of wrong. Born witness to the truth in every tone. Alleluia. And did not see to sing a song that night when heart was deep was drawn against the light. Then let her sing for whom he won the fight. Alleluia. Let every instrument be tuned for praise. Let her enjoy to have a voice to raise. And may God give us faith to sing. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.